the current state of sustainable finance. We will have keynote lectures and panel discussion. First, I would like to invite CEO of Principles for Responsible Investment, PRI, of Mr. David Atkin. Unfortunately, he could not be with us face to face today. We have received a video message from Mr. Atkin, which we will play now. Hello, everyone. I'm David Atkin, CEO of the Principles for Responsible Investment. Thank you to the organizers of the Tokyo Sustainable Finance Forum for inviting me to provide today's keynote speech. I'm very sorry that I can't be with you today delivering this address in person. For those of you who aren't familiar with the PRI, we were formed in 2006 out of the UN system by a small but committed group of asset owners aiming to bring sustainability to capital markets. Today we represent the global responsible investment community with over 5,300 signatories to our six principles who collectively represent over 128 trillion US dollars in AUM. The PRI has a proud history in Japan. I'm very pleased to say we serve 140 signatories in this important market who are supported by five Tokyo-based colleagues and, of course, benefit from our global wider expertise. Just last year, we had the incredible opportunity of hosting our annual conference, PRI in person, right here in Tokyo. And we were honoured to be joined by Prime Minister Kishida, who in his keynote speech highlighted four policy priorities for Japan on sustainable finance. These four priorities included enhancing investment in the green transformation, GX, growing the impact investment market, engaging in human capital as an emerging theme, and reforming the financial market to integrate sustainability outcomes. Importantly, each of these priorities incorporated concrete and time-bound commitments, as well as broader commitments to continuing to value and engage in sustainable finance policy. We are, we are thrilled that overall, the Japanese government has delivered on most of these priorities and commitments in just less than a year. We've also seen policy outcomes that go beyond what the Prime Minister has already committed to. These include the publication of Asset Owner Principles in August 2024, the publication of the Grand Design and Action Plan for a New Form of Capitalism revised version in June 24, and finally the publication of the Basic Guidelines on Impact Investment, Impact Finance, in March 2024. Japan remains a priority market for the PRI and we're excited about what's next. Looking ahead, we have impactful steps planned to continue building on this momentum, including the publication of a Japan-specific report of the Investment for the Economic Transition Project. With strong progress being made on sustainable finance policy, we will aim to open up dialogue in Japan on better integration and alignment of sustainable finance and real economy policies. The report will also serve as an important case study for other jurisdictions as Japan exhibits strong leadership in many areas. PRI will be focusing its policy engagement on climate and energy policy as the Strategy Energy Plan and NDC revision will be happening, both of which will have multi-year impacts on responsible investment practices. We will also continue to engage with our signatories prior to publication and submission of reports and consultations, namely through the Japan Regional Policy Reference Group or the Japan Advisory Committee. Now, taking a step back, I want to use this time to reflect on the evolving RI landscape. I was honoured to have the opportunity to deliver a virtual address to this conference two years ago. And while two years may seem like a short amount of time, a lot has changed since then. The world around us continues to shift at an unprecedented pace. Indeed, we are at a time of extraordinary transition. Fundamental structural shifts in our global economy, including massive trans transitions, transitions to a new and more efficient energy source, transitions to a new and exciting, though sometimes unpredictable, technologies continue to gather force at a seemingly exponential rate. The geopolitical landscape as we operate in as, is as uncertain as ever. And there's no question about it. This is a difficult time to be a responsible investor. Investors in some parts of the world are seeing real pushback emerge. The mainstreaming of RI is happening at different paces around the globe. Policymaking isn't keeping up with this rapidly evolving practice. I could go on. It's clear that the responsible investment finds itself at an inflection point. And it would all be too easy to talk ourselves into inaction, 
to look at the challenges and bury our heads in the sand. In fact, some of our critics would prefer us to do just that. But when you scratch the surface of all of these issues, I think you'll find that there might be a different way of looking at this and that there are reasons to be cheerful after all. Now, I don't for one moment mean to minimise the scale of the challenges we face as responsible investors. I'm realistic. Cheerful doesn't mean complacent. There is still an enormous amount of work to do. But we have two powerful forces at our disposal in the face of this adversity. The first is unity. I can't overstate the importance of working together as we navigate these complex times. And the second is optimism, which is truly critical to catalyzing the action we so urgently need. By working together, harnessing the power of this unity and optimism, we can do it. The work of responsible investors is realizing returns for clients and beneficiaries and a real world difference for wider society in the process. We can't be distracted from the task at hand. Now, whether you're an optimist or more skeptical, skeptical when it comes to the future of responsible investment, one thing is clear. It's time for us to redefine responsible investment. And at the PRI, we think we have a central role to play in this, working in collaboration with our signatories and the wider RI community. So in direct response to this changing environment we operate in, we launched a new strategy informed by consultations with our signatories just a couple of months ago. And it shifts our program priorities for the next three years to focus on four specific areas. First, driving signatory progression on responsible investment while streamlining mandatory PRI reporting. Secondly, strengthening the regional responsible investment ecosystems in both mature markets and emerging and developing economies. Third, amplifying signatory impact by supporting and leading collaborative initiatives. And fourth, strengthening the enabling environment for responsible investment by influencing government and multilateral policy and financial market practices. We hope this new strategy will set the PRI up for future success and critically that it will support the RI community to navigate both the opportunities and the challenges that lie ahead. And as we approach the, the PRI's 20th anniversary, which we celebrate in April 2026, we're also thinking about a longer term. So between now and then, we'll be working with the industry leaders across RI ecosystems to gather their insights, ideas and perspectives so that together we can shape what the, new, the next two decades look like for responsible investment. Whether it's identifying new opportunities, addressing emerging challenges or rethinking our approach, this input will be invaluable as we define the path forward. If you have views about what we should, where we should take responsible investment next, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear, from, hear your thoughts. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to speak to all of you, which is such a pivotal moment for our industry. I wish you a successful conference and look forward to the opportunity of collaborating with you on shaping the future of responsible investment. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a video message from Mr. David Atkin.